name is Brett Carnes. I'm a professional land surveyor. I work for Burse Surveying and Engineering in Madison, Wisconsin. When we're setting up, we'll take a tripod, set it over a known point such as a control point, and on top of that, we're setting a bracket called a tri brack with a way to level it on top of there, and then we set whatever we're going to use on there. What we're using on this site is uh, a Trimble 5600 robot. It's a total station that has little servo gears in it so it can move by itself without somebody actually physically operating it. Um, and to track us we have a handheld rod that's got a prism and a little tracking device on it the robot will follow you around with. And also with that same rod you've got a little handheld computer which we call a data collector. And the data collector uses a radio to talk back and forth to the robot so it can tell it what information we might need. And for the boundary work, our part of it as a surveyor is to do research to find out where that parcel is located in the county. Then we would go out into the actual project site and locate section corners, which have been established since the 1850s. And we use those section corners to zone in on exactly where we need to um, find their property. And we try and look and see if the property was ever surveyed. If it was surveyed, we should find some remnants of property corners, whether they're a fence post or an iron or a pipe or something. And then from there we measure everything that we can. That's when the engineers come in. They come in during the development stages. Um, they'll, they'll give the clients some ideas what they want to do. In the meantime, the surveyors, we get to go back into the field and do a topographic map of the property. And that'll give the contour lines. It'll show any trees, waterways, roads, any objects or items that are within their property and, and we usually do a little bit outside the boundary just to cover it. The engineers are all done with their, with their work, they give it to us and we go out in the field and begin staking and then we would put what we call hubs which are um, a one inch by two inch by 12 inch long piece of oak with a point on one end and flat on the other end. We pound that into the ground at the point that we need and then the contractor can measure off of that horizontally and vertically. So next to the hub we place a lath and our lath are about an inch and a half wide and maybe a half inch thick and three feet long and on that lath we put a ribbon on top and that ribbon, the color of the ribbon depicts what it is. For example blue would be uh, water and it'll let the contractor know that we're staking in that area for water. After the ribbon that we actually write with a, a black magic marker on there what information is pertinent to them. The first would be uh, a location, like a station from something. And the next part of information would be what is it. So, for example, we may be at station 21 plus 00, zero and the information after that would be what is it. Okay, well it's a two foot offset to the back of a curb. And then below that we would tell them how far they have to dig down or how much they have to fill in to get to that item that they're working on. On this project site, if you look around, there are large piles of black topsoil that are staked, or that are piled up in very nice, neat piles. That's what the uh, uh, excavators and uh, earthwork people took off at the beginning. They took it off and put it in places where they'd know they could use it again. When all the underground is done, they put that back so that you actually have dirt in your yard when you're a landowner. When that dirt is placed, then we go back in and put property corners in. For us, that's probably the closest to substantial completion when all the property corners are in.